One thing that really makes a great toy line is having very colorful enemies. And when those enemies can be a band of evil mutant... Wait a minute, hold on. No, no not those evil mutants. Ugh, no, 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 no. Not those evil mutants either. When are, when are they going to get the stuff right? The, these evil mutants, right? Yeah, the space mutants. Okay. So yes, villains tend to be the most colorful characters. And the same is true with the villains from the new adventures of He-Man. And while the show tends to be a bit of a black sheep amongst all of the entertainment that's come out for He-Man, well, it produced some of the most colorful and visually cool-looking characters. And the vintage line, even though it wasn't in sync or in scale which, with the, the previous line, that the, the Masters of the Universe line that came before it, it introduced some really, really cool designs, not just with the villains, but honestly with the heroes as well. The whole space theme and the weapons and the tech worked great for toys. And one of the things that excited me the most about being brand manager on Motu Classics was finding ways to incorporate all of the different areas of Motu, all the different canon and all the, the different uh, content, into the same look and feel, meaning classics. So you could take a new adventures figure and you could turn them into a Classics figure so they could now stand side by side with a Vintage figure or a 2000X figure or, you know, they all would share one look, even Princess of Power. So which new adventure figures to do? Well, Slushhead, uh, not, not that Slushhead, the other, this Slushhead, Slushhead was definitely someone at the top of the list, mainly because, well, he looked so darn cool. When you're looking at all the villains, I mean, between his octopus-like skin and his water-filled helmet and his giant tentacles, he just had those cool toyetic qualities that we knew would look really cool, translated as a six-inch action figure. And, you know, not that there isn't any lack of fan art of Slushhead out there online, but he was a favorite with the team as well, and when viewing everybody, we wanted to find the, the mutants that sort of had big roles on the show. Um, you know, had sort of, not necessarily starring roles in every episode, but at least, you know, Slushhead was somebody who everyone just tended to migrate to. I mean, who doesn't love a good slushy, right? I mean, come on. So, the work was underway to add yet another mutant into our lineup. We'd already gotten to Optic, and we wanted to build up the mutant sort of faction, I guess, as quick as we could without overdoing it. Because honestly, as we found in time, the mutants and the space uh, galactic protectors were the lowest selling sort of subcategory. So what is up with Slushhead? And especially why is he called Calamar on all of his toys when everyone knows him as Slushhead from the animated series and from Motu Classics? And, you know, not to be confused with Mon Calamari or the actual dish calamari, which, you know, is just squid tentacles. Well, having two different names is something that a lot of figures in New Adventures had. There was Tuscador and Sizor. There was, uh, no, we already did Tuscador. Come on, no, no, the next one. Thank you. All right. And there was Acarius, who was also Flipshot. A lot of these names were because of European release. So while a character was called Flog in the U.S., the European version would be Brack. Well, with Slushhead, the name was never changed. It was just always Calamar. And why it was changed to Slushhead for the show, something I asked Jack O'Lester when I met him at PowerCon, and he basically said it seemed like a good idea at the time. So, hey, he was Slushhead on the show, but always Calamar as a toy. Well... When you're translating the new adventure figures into classics, there was definitely a little bit more of a bump because they all were basically fully tooled figures for the vintage line. And finding ways to use shared parts and bring them into classics was a little tricky. For example, Slush had had octopus tentacle arms-ish, you know, like the little circles all over his arms and legs and the bumps. Well, we kind of found a happy medium. By using different parts from Whiplash and the Reptile Buck, we were more or less able to cobble together a passable version of Slushhead's body without having to fully tool him. We knew that if we had to fully tool the new Adventures figures, it was just going to break the bank. And again, because they were low sellers, it was hard to justify all the tooling. So really the idea was to get the the 
kind of concept of slush head out there, if you will, to basically make a figure that would clearly read as slush head, even if he was missing some of the details, like all the octopus marks on his hands and legs. So we put him out there at San Diego Comic-Con and premiered him, and honestly, I don't remember anyone making a fuss over this. I mean, we definitely got things that people brought up on other figures, but yeah, Slushhead's arms not having all those pock marks or the bumps on his legs. Hey, he was clearly reading as Slushhead, and that was really the point. And I was a little nervous about what fans were going to say. We did kind of the same with Optic, but it worked, and fans seemed pretty happy. We also wanted to make him a little bit more sort of evil and villainous and not as goofy as he kind of looked on the show. And I think the Horsemen, once again, just knocked it out of the park. They created a character using shared parts that looked like an evil mutant and read like Slushhead. I mean, there's no doubt that's Slushhead. His bio is pretty easy because all the New Adventures figures had bios on the back of their card back, so that became pretty easy. Now, because we had issues in the past when we kind of went the extra mile, like trying to make snout spouts snout bendable or opposable, and in return it backfired and became breakable, well, for that reason, we backed off on things like making slush heads, tentacles, articulated. They were just solid plastic, and again, we basically wanted to avoid the issues we had with snout spout. It seemed like every time we kind of went the extra mile, again, like with Roboto making all his gears separately molded so they wouldn't paint scratch, well, lo and behold, the shoulders got swapped because we were fo focused on the gears. Another thing that happened with Slushhead is because of some delays, three figures wound up shipping his month. We had uh, Stinkor, Spectre, and Slushhead, the three S's. So that was a whole can of worms for fans that were trying to afford the figures, and when we had too many hitting at once, we really tried to avoid that, but sometimes we couldn't. The other can of worms was the water being added to his helmet. So we talked about having this being done in the factory and having him come with water, what we call Hong Kong water, which, or Hong Kong air, which is when there's empty space in the package, but it was definitely decided that it would be better for fans to add this themselves for you know, logistical reasons. And I also love bubble-headed figures, like figures that have that kind of like 1930s sci-fi look where they have a giant you know, bowl around their head kind of like Queen Marlena did, and Slushhead brings so much of that kind of 1950s sci-fi look to the brand that, what can I say, I'm a sucker for, you know, those old space serials like Flash Gordon and, and you know, that classic sci-fi look we had before World War II, and that was probably a big reason why he kind of wound up in the line. He just had that cool, evil villain look. A lot of fans liked him because he was easy to customize, and he brought a lot of uh, cool color and options, especially for all the lizard and snake characters we had out there. So you could, you know, pop on different snake heads and kind of had a body that worked well for that. And, you know, hey, even without posable tentacles, he worked really well, and he had that toyetic look that I said in the beginning that just made him a great figure. Love the space blaster, love the armor, and he's cool. <laughs> 